Good morning, boys and New Hope family. Hope this message finds you all well. Hope you all had a great day and a great week. Uh, we're going to take a small break from the book of Isaiah. Uh, this week and next week we'll take a break, and then we'll get started with Isaiah chapter 40 on August 7th. And we're at a good time for that because really at a breaking point in the book where the first half of the book of the first 39 chapters we've gone over has talked a lot about uh, God's judgment for Assyria, for Babylon, and really helping God's people maintain the course, so to speak, and to stay devoted to him. The next chapters in the book, the split that happens, it deals with the time after the captivity. It's a prophecy about the future of Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity. And so that's what's coming up next, but we're going to take a break for now. I'm going to talk about something that's kind of important to the Church of the Nazarene. Not kind of, but it's kind of a defining hallmark of the Church of the Nazarene. And that is our dedication to holiness. Uh, so I want to talk about that this week and next week about holiness, what it is, what it isn't, and hopefully help you have a better understanding of that holy lifestyle that we're all called to live. And to start with, let's begin with the definition of holy. And holy, from what I found, is an adjective, and it simply means being dedicated or consecrated to God or religious purpose or something sacred. That was the definition, to be dedicated or consecrated to God, or religious purpose, or it's something sacred. It was the definition of holy. So in other words, it's basically to be set apart for God's use. Being holy is being being available to be used by God for his purposes on this earth. Uh, but one thing I noticed is that holiness is not perfection. And none of the definitions I found uh, didn't say that holiness was equated to perfection. Or that a holy person is a perfect person. It just means that we're set apart, we're consecrated for God's use. We've been set apart to see his will done in this, in this world. And why is that important to realize, you might ask yourself. Because uh, I think a lot of people equate holiness to perfection. They equate a holy life with a perfect life. And they believe that if you're going to live a holy life, you have to live a sinless life. Um, or one without mistakes. But looking back at that definition, sin or perfection is not found in that definition. It's not found in that definition of holiness. And so our, it seems that holiness is more to do with our attitude and our actions and less with um, the outcomes. So what I mean by that is that it deals with our heart being a heart set apart, that we might still stumble in sin, but our heart says we're still devoted to seeking God's will on this earth. And so holiness is very much a condition of the heart. It's a condition of um, devotion to the Lord and being willing to be used by him in this world. And so that's an important distinction to remember is that holiness is not perfection and that we can be a holy people without being a perfect people. Um, and, and that's important to remember. It's also kind of significant that the word holy appears over 500 times in the Bible, depending on your translation. It appears over 500 times in the Bible, and it's most often associated with God and his presence. You think of Moses being told to remove his sandals because God said that the ground he was standing on was holy ground. Or you think of the Ten Commandments were told to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Or the people of Israel being called to be holy as the Lord is holy. You know, those are all examples we like to use and talk about holiness and what holy is. What I find significant with each one of those, holiness comes with a command for action. Moses was told to remove his sandals because he was on holy ground. The people of God are told to imitate God's holiness and his devotion. We're requested to keep the Sabbath holy and keep our actions uh, pure on the Sabbath so that it can be set apart for that day. And so it requires a commitment from the believer to make holiness happen. So it's not simply a state of being or a condition of our faith. It's actually a call to action for our faith. So we talked about holiness was a mindset, but it's also a call to action. So we have devoted ourselves and our hearts to be set apart for God's use. But to actually have that definition apply to us, we actually have to do something. And it, it involves a call to action, usually behaving in a manner that's not consistent with the world's expectations is tip what holiness is. It requires an action that's not consistent with how the world might expect us or how culture might expect us to behave. You know, you look at the example of keeping the Sabbath holy. Um, 
we all have different definitions of how we do that. You know, some consider Sunday to be the holy the Sabbath, others consider Friday, so some say Saturday, some maybe a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Some people fast from media, some people fast from food, um, some choose not to work on Sabbath. It's a very wide range of how we honor that day. And I say that none of those are wrong, but the condition is our heart on those days. How are we honoring the Lord on those days? Am I choosing not to work because I don't want to work? Or am I choosing not to work because the Lord rested and I should as well? And it's a condition of the heart on those days that determines if that action falls into that holiness perspective or not. And so holiness is a mindset, but it's also a call to action. And secondly, it's a call to action to change our behavior. And it's a call to walk closer with the Lord. When he says, be holy as I am holy, that, that is not a, a natural state for mankind to be in. It's something that we have to change and to encourage ourselves to move in a different direction. And so holiness is a call to action that is not only honoring the Lord in those actions, but it's also an honoring God through ourselves or honoring God's um, lordship by moving closer to him. You know, as I mentioned earlier, that a lot of people think that holiness is equated to perfection. And I think I spent many years of my life equating holiness with a sinless life, a holy life with a sinless life. And I think of King David. He was a man after God's own heart, yet he still sinned in significant ways throughout his life. And I think I carried a lot of guilt because of my sins, because I knew my life wasn't living up to God's standards. And the idea of God's command to be holy as I am holy was almost almost a burden to me at times. Uh, but what I've come to learn as I've gotten a little older, a little more mature, is that um, holiness and sin and sin are not necessarily connected. So a holy life is not necessarily consecutive for a sinless life, meaning one doesn't happen to happen before the next. So we don't live a holy life before we live a sinless life. And it's not that I get to be holy when I become sinless either. It's not that I have to be sinless and be perfect first, then I have a holy life. That's not how it works either. But this idea between a holy life and a sinless life is one leads to the other, and they are both interconnected. Um, it's not a consecutive relationship. It's a concurrent relationship, meaning that as we live a holy life, the sin in our life will become less. And as we seek to sin less, the holiness in our life will become greater. And, and so... The two work together. And so I think what Paul said, not that we have obtained that state, but he presses on towards the goal. You know, and so the state of sinlessness is not a prerequisite to be holy. Rather, it's dedicating ourselves to the Lord is the act of being holy to be set apart for his use. And often life provides challenges to that holiness and to that stance. Um, but it is a a concurrent relationship where one is not dependent upon the other, but one happens when the other happens. I hope that makes sense, because I spent a lot of time in my life thinking that I was failing to live a holy life, failing to live a life dedicated to the Lord because there was sin in life. But in actuality, a holy life is dedicated to the Lord, and as that life is lived, sin decreases in a life. So one is not required for the other. And I do agree that God's desire is for us not to sin because he cannot abide by sin. Um, but we're going to talk more about that next week, about what the evidence of a holy life actually is. And so we'll talk about that next week with what does it look like day in, day out to live a holy lifestyle, not just perfection versus sin. But I kind of want to leave with that thought this morning. Um, as I said, next week we'll talk about that holiness tradition and how our faith is expressed through that. But for now, I want you to know that holiness is simply a dedication to the Lord. And as a church, as a holiness church, we're dedicated to the Lord, to his lordship, to his leading in our church, in our lives, in our communities, in our nation, in our world. That is what it means to be a holiness church, is to be dedicated to the Lord and his movements. And so holiness is dedication, but it also demands a response from us as believers. It's a call to action. Holiness says that we should do something differently. And so holiness is a is really just that. It's a call to action to live a life that is contrary to the world's expectations and standards. Um, it's to live a life according to God's standards and God's expectations. And so a holy lifestyle will be contrary to the world's lifestyle. 
and that's okay. It's okay to live a life contrary to what's happening around us. Um, that's okay. And again, we'll talk about that next week with the evidence of a holy life. But as I said, holiness should not be equated to perfection. We have to understand that God's grace is available to us when we sin, not that we plan to sin or that we encourage sin, but if and when that happens in our lives, God's grace is still available to us. And so <clears throat> holiness is such a large part of our identity as a church. I thought it'd be appropriate to spend a couple of weeks and actually talk about and be reminded of that, about what that actually means. And so holiness is not perfection. It's a dedication. It's a call to action. It is not sinlessness. It is a concurrent lifestyle that helps us become less sinful. And it's a lifestyle that helps us engage in the work God is doing around us. And so I hope you got a little bit of understanding of that holiness tradition today, what it is and what it isn't. Um, but we'll talk more next week about that specific application. But until that time, remember that God loves you. We're a blessed people, and we just thank you for joining us today. Father, we do ask you to go before us this week, Lord, that you would help us live a holy life, God, that you would show those areas where we need uh, your light, your grace in, and God, help us to be devoted to the things of you in this world, God, your mission, your goals, your plans and purposes as are always at work around us, God. But as work, we are working and join with you in that plan. Lord, we love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as always, thanks for joining me. I'm so glad you did. Until next time, God loves you, and we're a blessed people.